Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Tony Ndoro live from Johannesburg. These are your top stories. Back to the negotiating table. SARS, SARS urges workers to return to their posts for now and give wage talks a chance. The South African government pledges 60 million rand to Mozambique to assist in the aftermath of the deadly cyclone Idai. And South Africa waits tonight's credit review from Moody's, which could see it lose its investment grade standing. All right, let's, we start with this, though. A two-day strike has forced SARS back to the negotiating table. The revenue collector is urging workers to return to their posts for now to give wage talks a chance. Services have been severely disrupted across the country, with some taxpayers unable to meet the deadlines for their returns. Dimakatsu Tugwana has the details. In a show of force, workers affiliated to unions, the Public Servants Association, and how came through in their hundreds, descending on the SARS head office in Pretoria, all in the name of better salaries. Unions and SARS hope to resolve the two-day strike when they meet on Friday evening. At the center of the dispute is the terms of the wage offer. Workers are prepared to accept an 8% increase over 12 months, while SARS is prepared to pay 8%, but only over three years, with some annual adjustments. Taxpayers will be hoping they won't be inconvenienced much longer. The strike continues. Um, we're just going to have our members temporarily now reporting for duty for purposes of having a formal place where we'll address them. The strike has caused major disruptions at a time when the revenue collector is under pressure to meet its more than 1.3 trillion rand target. Most of the work that needs to be done with regards to revenue collection has been done before this week. So this week, primarily, we're expecting taxpayers to make their payments for all that is uh, still remaining. SARS says it will only know at midnight on Sunday if it's met its collection target for the 2018 financial year. Dimagato Tugwana, Johannesburg. It will take around 18 months for ESCOM to fix the load shedding crisis. That's according to the Public Enterprises Minister, Pravin Gordon. He made the announcement in his capacity as an ANC leader. That was uh, during a ward meeting in Sharon Lee in Johannesburg. Heidi Jokos was there and she filed this report. South Africans want answers, and on Thursday night, Praveen Gordon promised to be as honest as possible about the electricity crisis. Of the 17 or 18 power stations, each power station has so many units, four units, six units, ten units. Each unit has a boiler. Each boiler has something like 600 kilometers of tubes. So the journey between Johannesburg and Durban is 600 kilometers. Right? And in the recent past, we've had a number of tube leakages happening. The communities also demanded answers from Gordon about why Sunrel and the finance minister are on opposite sides of the E-Tolls divide. Tito Mbaweni has slammed the roads agency decision to stop prosecuting defaulters for now. Gordon says governments and South Africans will have to find a meeting point. I think it's best to leave it to the Premier, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Transport to find a final solution to where we're going. Because some of us are paying because we feel that we have a guilty conscience and we must help Senrail to whatever extent we can. And what we contribute might help Senrail to pay off some of its debt. And other, others of us believe it's a wrong thing to pay at this point in time. Gordon admits the ANC is grappling with a number of issues, but says the party is addressing them head on. Heidi Jokas in Johannesburg. Zimbabwe wants more help from South Africa to help pick up the pieces after Cyclone Idai. Our government and billionaire Patrice Mutsepe has already pledged 75 million rand to Harare. Mozambique, the country that's hardest hit, is getting the same amount. Dayson Tathia, Father's Report. Zimbabwe's Chimani Mani district, like Beira in Mozambique, is in tatters after Cyclone Idai. Search and rescue operations are ongoing, and the death toll is expected to rise. Uh, we have asked the Zimbabwean government to provide us with the statistics and the details because it is quite shocking. With the need for food and medical supplies unabating, 
The South African government has pledged 60 million rand to the country. We look forward uh, to such kind of interaction and uh, assistance and brotherhood uh, 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 to continue. And one South African businessman also chipped in with a 15 million rand donation. We are uh, in pain and uh, we also want to express our compassion, but also to emphasize that uh, whenever there are challenges of this nature on the continent, in the first instance, it is those of us who are from the continent uh, who must take the lead and partner with uh, other uh, international partners when there were challenges of Ebola in West Africa, the business community in Africa made uh, their own donation. The Zimbabwean government is grateful, but given the magnitude of the destruction here, it's appealing for more help. Sisulu and Motsepe also traveled to Mozambique. Beira, which was hardest hit, will also be getting a 75 million rand donation. Desantathia in Mozambique. Okay, let's look at other stories making headlines today. Randberg Magistrates Court has found that uh, Duduzane Zuma does have a case of culpable homicide and negligent driving to answer to. Zuma's bid to avoid charges failed today when the court dismissed his discharge application. Former President Jacob Zuma's son was involved in a car crash in 2014 when his Porsche collided with a taxi in Santon, killing passenger Pumzile Dube. Just over 1,000 DA supporters marched on the union buildings today against the electricity crisis in the country. Leader Musima Imani slammed load shedding in addition to the decision to increase electricity tariffs by 10% from this Monday, which is the 1st of April. Maimani also slammed the ANC government and President Cyril Ramaphosa, saying he was no different to former President Jacob Zuma for receiving a 500,000 rand donation for his presidential campaign from Busasa. Now, a unique family home is taking shape in Port Elizabeth, but unlike most other buildings, its owners will not be beholden to the bank, and it's also dirt cheap. Sandy McCowan has the story. Tired of city living and determined to get a better quality of life, Randall Marmon and his wife Inika have looked into a life completely off the grid. <laughs> so they quit their jobs, bought a piece of land in Rocklands and set up a home in a wooden cabin with their three children. They finally started building their dream house in January using a rather unusual technique. We, we get uh, reject uh, bags that we get from a company. We buy it in which, which is quite uh, not too expensive. And we fill the bags with sand, the sand we get from the land here. Yeah? And then we, it's just a matter of stacking the bags. Once complete, their five-bedroom, three-bathroomed earth home will be completely self-sustaining, relying on solar panels for electricity, rainwater and a vegetable garden. And I like to have less a footprint on the earth, so to live more in a balance with the earth. I think if everybody does that, then we don't have all these problems that the uh, earth is degenerating. Marmon learned this technique from his neighbour, Andy Reitmeyer, who bought into the concept three years ago. We get gale force winds blowing here and the structure it's held its own. So it's proven itself and I'm very happy with it. Sandy McCowan, Port Elizabeth. Stay with us here on E! News, coming up. The eyes to the right, 286. The nose to the left, 344. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock. Another blow for Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit plans as MPs reject her withdrawal agreement yet again.
Well, the country is waiting with bated breath this evening to see if it loses its remaining investment grade. Moody's is the only one of uh, the three major ratings agencies holding South Africa on investment grade. I spoke to the Northwest University Business School's Professor Raymond Parsons a short while ago and began by asking him how a rating downgrade will affect the country. It won't be good news, but we mustn't assume the worst and we must hope for the best. There are a number of options. They're the one credit rating agency that stands between us and our universal junk status, because the other two have already downgraded us. And that would uh, expose us to higher borrowing costs and some problems on the financial markets. We will survive if survival is what we want. It's not the end of the world. And quite a few countries have eventually clawed their way back to investment status after a few years. Wants, wants to avoid it. It's not a good message. Now, there are a number of options uh, for, of course, Moody's. They can uh, leave us as, as we are, but send us a message about how they think things ought to be done uh, in order to avoid bad news in future. Or alternatively, they may say, we're leaving your investment grading unchanged, but we're going to change the outlook from stable to negative. That sends a warning signal uh, as to what they would like to see done in order to recognize the implications of that warning signal. And thirdly, they may simply say, we're putting you on notice that we're going to downgrade you in three or four months' time. So that's another option. The important point for South Africa is whatever the decision, the impact on the markets, on the RAND, on confidence, on all of us who are interested in, in this decision will hinge on just how important and how negative the decision is on the one hand, which of the options do they go for? But on the other hand, the markets have already priced some of the bad news in already. So it will depend how the markets will react, uh, will depend very much on whether what Moody's decides more or less coalesces with what they're expecting, mm -hmm. or whether the news is worse than they're expecting. Then of course, you might get quite a negative reaction in the markets. How will this affect the ordinary man on the street watching us right now? The man in the street, whether you're a consumer, a worker, a business person, you don't have to understand the technicalities to know that if South Africa gets junk status, it means that our ability to be able to borrow abroad becomes a little more difficult, not impossible, but more difficult. But above all, for both the government and the private sector, it means that your borrowing costs will rise. And so it was important yesterday that the Reserve Bank decided to keep interest rates stable and steady. That's where we want to be. We want to actually control our monetary policy. We don't want adverse factors to lead to changes in the financial markets, which then impose higher borrowing costs on us from abroad. So first prize for, is for us to do the things we need to do Yep, so to we don't satisfy get what we need to get to get this economy bigger, better and stronger than it is at the moment. All right, we await that announcement, uh, but this is what the markets look like today. Let's take a look at some international news now. And MPs have rejected the latest Brexit deal proposed by Prime Minister Theresa May. It's the third time her withdrawal agreement has been rejected. The eyes to the right, 286. The nose to the left, 344. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock. The defeat comes on the same day that Britain was originally supposed to leave the European Union and has now left the path forward on Brexit unclear. Uh, the rejection of May's plan raises the chance of a lengthy delay for Brexit or Britain crashing out of Europe without a deal on the new deadline, which is April the 12th.
after the break, we've got Candice. Uh, she's uh, standing by at our weather center. She'll bring us the details. And then, what would you pay for a seat at Wimbledon, the Wimbledon Center Court, for five years? We'll tell you about this possible investment coming up. Welcome back. Candice is standing by with the weather details. Candice, is going to be a hot autumn weekend, isn't it? That's correct. It's going to be a hot weekend over much of South Africa, except under the fog. And it's our foggy season, and we're expecting that fog along the west coast yet again overnight and into Saturday morning. We're also expecting it along the northeastern and eastern escarpment, where we also might see a bit of drizzle. And then dry and warm weather is expected over much of the country on Saturday. But we might see a bit of thunderstorm activity over parts of Limpopo and Mpumalanga. It's a bit of a strange rainfall pattern on Saturday with another band of thunderstorms storms also moving in from Namibia through to the western interior and then much later on in the day we could see a few drops of rainfall over the southern part of the northern Cape. You'll see another sizzling hot afternoon for Uppington and Prisco both in the upper 30s with that band of thunderstorms moving into Springbok and Carnarvon at 30 and 33 degrees. Dry throughout the western Cape in the mid-20s for Cape Town and Longoban. Hamanis at 23 with the possibility of evening rainfall. George Mercy clear at 24 degrees. We're heading to the upper 20s and low 30s for much of the Eastern Cape with the mostly sunny and dry weekend in store. We're also expecting a similar day as we head towards Kwisudi Natal with a maximum temperature of around 30 for many of those weather stations. A bit of light rain will move in over Bombela at 27 with Emikazeni and Emilatleni expecting thunder showers at 26 and 28 degrees. You'll also see that morning fog and drizzle through to Zanin and Toya and Do, both of the warm afternoon. Then thunder showers are expected over the central and southwestern part of Limpopo, spilling over into Rustenburg at 32 degrees, sunny and hot for Freiburg and Maheking, both in the mid-30s. 33 for Bloemfontein with a fine and dry Saturday in store, and Bethlehem and Harry Smith head into the upper 20s. In Gauteng, we're expecting mostly clear weather with a maximum of around 30 for most weather stations, Pretoria topping 32 with the possibility of thunder showers. Now those thunderstorms pick up across South Africa as we head into Sunday, but you'll see that temperatures still stay hot with some rain over the southern parts. And then on Monday, we're expecting mild weather for Cape Town at 23. With a cool day in the south and the possibility of rainfall, tardy, wet and cooler weather is forecast for Kwasudu Natal. But you'll see that temperatures still stay hot across the interior with thunderstorms mainly in the northeast. That's all from the Weather Center. Have a super weekend. All right, thank you so much, Candice. It's Candice uh, with the weather details as we head into the weekend. Now, finally, in this bulletin, looking for a different investment that may pay off over the odds returns. Well, a center court seat at Wimbledon may just be your best bet. 2,500 seats valid for five years have gone on sale, but they don't come cheap. They're going for 80,000 pounds, and that's nearly 1.5 million rand as well as admission for every center court game between 2021 and 2025. The debenture offers a tidy investment opportunity. Now, just recently, one pass holder who bought his seat for 66,000 pounds sold it off the final two years uh, for 138,000 pounds. The seats are the absolute best in the house and include access to an exclusive restaurant and lounge, and most importantly, to parking. But the strawberries and cream, of course, are not free and you have to be mad and love your tennis let's look at your top stories for tonight back to the negotiating table SARS urges workers to return to their posts for now and give wage talks a chance the South African government pledges 60 million rand to Mozambique to assist in the aftermath of a deadly cyclone Idai and South Africa awaits tonight's credit review from Moody's, which could see it lose its investment grade standing. That's it for me and the team behind the scenes. Have a fantastic Friday evening. Good night. <laughs>